All, all I'm saying is that people, um, Catholics and, and Christians, and even just conservatives in general, need to get a new approach to yeah. the world. And the new approach is, okay, like, if you want to be ecumenical, like, it, most religious people are ridiculous. I mean, go look at any of the polytheisms. Polytheism, which is 99.9% .9 of religion, are ridiculous. Um, and yes, there's some as aspects is Catholicism, of Catholicism if God doesn't exist. We're eating a cracker and calling it God. Of course. But the, the, the difference is that it, it is um, asten uh, not more than, more than ostensibly. Catholicism is demonstrably true. It's demonstrably true, right? I mean, it's, it's actually the heresy of modernism. We have the one faith where it's a heresy to say that you, your belief is ultimately based on faith alone. You know, our faith, Pope Leo XIII taught getting it down to one God that you have certain uh, reason alone knowledge of is necessary, mm -hmm. right? It is, is a teaching of the church. Anything else is the heresy of modernism to say that faith plays it. Faith plays a larger role from there. Once you know there's one God and helping you to sort out what his properties are, whether he's triune or not, or what form, what strain of Christianity now that Christianity Christianity has this half-life called Protestantism, which splits, you know, twice a day. There are going to be two more sects of Protestantism by the time we finish this interview. As, as like, there may be in Catholicism, though, because I think Catholic Protestants look at us when we criticize their splitting, and they're like, y'all like to pretend you're divided, but you're not. I mean, you're maybe unified under the Pope, but there are so many fractions within Catholicism that are warring right but now. They're good, but they're good. They're good factions, right? Because when you kick some, when you're a magisterial faith, yeah. the way the one true faith is, um, there's the binding authority to kick people out. Right. You Which know. isn't being used, maybe. Right. It needs to be used. Yeah. But when we have a schism, the schismatics are out. Yeah. Um, so that's not actually factionalization. That's just you're out of the game. You mm -hmm. just got DQ'd. Or you're just living within the church and have not yet been... Tossed. Kicked out, yeah. But but there's a difference when when you have non-magisterial faiths like Protestantism. It just there's no binding authority to say what's right. Yeah, it's just right. literally you, you split off more yeah, and more. Yeah. But but the the ultimate point to stay in the truth in the faith <laughs> right. is one. It's the one true faith. I we haven't talked about any because there are some lots of too many homo priests and bishops. Sort of their problem. And, and their flock, when their flock is not being redirected, mm -hmm. right? When they're being taught that basically super happy Jesus is like the slam dunk Jesus, you know, not on the crucifix, I call him. He's, right. he's got like a basketball. Uh, I think the, terrible. the church I went to in Orlando, he actually had a basketball and was doing like the Shaquille O'Neal slam. <laughs> on the thing. It's sort of sweet because I'm a basketball fan, but they should probably should change that. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, when they're not being directed like, hey, you, you can't contracept, you can't you know, uh, you have to do these things and you cannot do these things. Um, that's a problem for those people. And that's where the ministry like yours or, or mine matters very much. Mm. Just telling them. And that's where I find directness to be most helpful is just, yeah. no, don't do this, do this. Let me try and sum up what I think your approach is. Cause we've been chatting for a while now and I know I've been pushing back and you've been pushing back. I think what you might be saying, and then you tell me if I'm wrong is, um, We've tried nuance, like we've nuanced everything to death to the point that people have no idea what we're talking about. So what you're trying to do is I'm going to just say it as hardly and as truthfully as I know how, and then I'll backpedal and I'll explain what I mean after if you're so jarred that you don't, you, you can't accept it. Is that yeah, what you're doing? You're kind of leading with the punch and then... Just following Jesus, man. He said, let your yes mean yes and you know mean no. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else comes from the wicked one. I mean, so that's, that's just... But I mean, you... Yes, that's right. Unless what you mean is the exaggeration thing. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I literally no, just... No, there is a difference between hyperbole and exaggeration, right? Like you're speaking a truth. Um, I don't think I'm doing either, though. I mean, I honestly... You don't think you're being hyperbolic? Not at all. But when you say things like really, every other religion is ridiculous... Every it, other it, religion is not... We've just talked about that. And you've admitted a, that they're not equally ridiculous. And so to brand, brandish them all is ridiculous. That's the modus tollens, though, isn't it? Well, because I didn't say uh, equally religious. Every religion bears the quality of ridiculousness as Catholicism would but if See, now if you're Jesus being nuanced. Weren't. See, this is... You are putting it But that's an genus now. to species. Right. This is not backpedaling. That's just, yeah, of course, it's, it's how you write. You, you know, you give, you give the um, generic first, and then you get specific yeah. under it, topic yeah. sentence. Yeah. So, but that's, that's, not what, that's not even what 
again, I'm, I feel like I'm throwing him under the bus. He just sticks out in my mind. That's Who? like Milo. You know, that's not oh. that's not what Milo does, where he say uh, an exaggerated thing and then backpedal it a little bit and then kind of put your last sentence on. And but it's he's, mostly true. He, I mean, he might be trying to convey something true, but he is intentionally inflammatory. When he dresses up like a Muslim woman and gets on stage. It's hilarious stuff. though. Come on. But it might be, Laughter. You, you might find that hilarious, but he's clearly not trying to be nuanced for the sake of truth there. Come on, oh, every, everyone finds that hilarious. No, he, that's that's a, a different kind of truth. There is such a thing as a performed truth. Right. I don't want to I don't want to uh, judge that because yeah. I, I think um, I think there's a lot of value in it. I, I it wouldn't be good if I did it cuz it's not my thing. Mm -hmm. But um I don't I'm just saying it's not my thing. That's all. I, I think there's value in having someone okay. like Milo out there. Yeah. Um, um, he no. seems to be on a journey of his own, doesn't he? He is. That interview he did with Patrick Coffin was excellent. When I listened to that interview, I was nervous to hear Patrick Coffin interview My Milo. I was like, I like this man. Oh, he's, I, I wanted to hug him. I wanted to pray with him. He's very nice. He's very nice to you. Uh, I mean, so he's the first one that published Catholic Republic. I don't so know. So you've you got to tell that. us yeah. about Catholic Republic too. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know if some people wants me talking about, it, but yeah, he just he's. He's a truth seeker. Oh, yeah. He's so on a Catholic journey. Republic is my book. Your book. Yeah, he published it. Oh, he published your book before Sophia Institute. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's like I love this. He's like I love this. So you've known him for a while, or no? Just through that, I I defend with Church Militant did a great interview with him before Pat Coffin okay. did that interview. You know, a year before. Some of the, the the Church Militant fans were shitting Nokia's, so I just wrote. I I a lot of times will write little uh, defense articles for church and militant on their site mm -hmm. i have done it with lots of entertaining instances uh -huh. and i said here's why it's good that church militant interviewed milo when i was basically saying what i'm saying now i think yeah. he does a lot of good work um he, he, he goes around telling a bunch of secular fans of his the church is right about everything and they're like you're you're being exaggerative and he's like no mm -hmm. um and then he gives he hits them with all this church history it's pretty amazing yeah it is and he's this you know gay dude that goes around flamboyant and he's like no but this i'm not i'm not backing off i'm not being silly uh and it's really it's a good combo it's a good one-two punch mm. so i defended him he wrote them he's like hey i love this defense article and then i just started talking to him and i was like hey i have a book i think you'd love because i've been kicked off of catholic answers press mm. uh, the, the, the catholic republic why america will perish without rome was originally contracted on catholic answers press oh wow too extreme form or whatever too do they end up know, publishing at all or do they, they just see the manuscript no, they, no i mean i was i didn't i didn't even know this could happen because this is my first book they saw the manuscript they kicked it back huh. after i produced the thing i you know then boris was going to help me publish it in church militant put it on their uh imprint but but something i we're, we're, we're very friendly um and that wasn't his fault but I, yeah i was bitter i wanted this thing out i think it's an important book um uh, and so I ended up sending it to Milo as a kind of third or fourth option. He was like, we love it. We're going to do this on his, his imprint, Dangerous Books. He printed his, he printed Pamela Geller's book on the assassination attempt, you know, in, in Garland, Texas. Mm -hmm. I think mine was only the third book that, that. Did it, it do that well Dangerous, under that publication? Or? It came out in February of last year. Okay. And then they literally, the next week, they were starting to say, well, we're folding up basically. Oh. So, so no, no, from a sales perspective, no, but it got into a lot of people's hands. That's how Marshall knew about it. Okay. It was in the form of the dangerous book book. And then of course, Sophia Institute Press said they wanted to re-release it after they knew about me with Taylor Marshall. But if not for Milo, right. And you know, I've, I've had conversations with the guy. He's, he's a, he's a sincere guy. Huh. Um, had you chatted smart. with him about living in a homosexual relationship, or are you not there yet? No, because every you know, the everybody does Forrest that. did, yeah. Pat Coffin <laughs> did. Uh, I think I think yeah, he gets Peter, it. He gets, he gets it. it everywhere. Like, yeah. bro, here's the thing, bro. You're a good dude. I want to talk to you about something. He's like, it, I mean, it would be like, a, I hate, I hate saying cliche things. Yeah, like, we talked about, you know. Well, well it's like anything. I mean, challenge. you've got a really what's that? cliche since we're speaking about cliches people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care right and if you're just meeting i made guy, that up by the way did you well done that's yeah. incredible it's yeah. spread far and wide yeah i use it with the feminists ah uh, okay <laughs> they, they know how much i care <laughs> <laughs> yo thanks for watching you can watch the entire episode on youtube if you want you can listen to it at the matt frad show by subscribing on itunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts and feel free to support me patreon.com slash matt frad